Okay. Go ahead and call us to meet in order. First item is a roll call. Alderman Arnold. Here. Alderman Lett. Here. Alderman Headley. Here. Alderman Chaper. Here. Alderman Kelly. Here. Alderman Johnson. Here. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is invocation and. Pastor Hutchinson is delayed by a train on the tracks that we all know so well, so he's going to be unable to join us this evening. So, City Minister Alexa Barton is going to lead us in that, and be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance from Alderman Headley. Lord, we come to you this hour asking for your blessings and help as we enter into the Lord's Day. We pray for guidance in the matters at hand, and ask that you would clearly show us how to conduct our work with a spirit of joy and enthusiasm. We ask this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next time is the approval of the agenda. Yes, we have one change of seating there. Your proclamations, we have two proclamations on there. The one for Shannon Larkin needs to be moved to August 25th when she will be able to attend. Okay. I want to entertain a motion to amend the agenda then to remove Officer Larkin's proclamation and place it back on August 25th. Move. Motion Alderman Johnston. Do I have a second? Second. Second Alderman Headley. Any discussion? Seeing that, and all in favor, please say aye. 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 All for the same sign. All right. Agenda is amended. Next item then is proclamation for Daniel Ions. We have City of Grand Valley versus the Grand Valley School District Basketball Challenge. See the back there? Whereas Officer Daniel Ions has been a member of the Grand Valley Police Department since November 2013, and whereas in 2013 the Grand Valley Police Department, with the assistance of the Grand Valley School District, added an additional school resource officer for the purpose of collaborating on site with school administration and staff to investigate crime on school property, incorporate law related education and safety into the school curriculum, and enhance communication through the school setting. And whereas during Officer Ions' first year as school resource officer, he has distinguished himself by initiating the organization of a City of Grand Valley versus Grand Valley School District Basketball Challenge to raise funds for the School Resource Officer Program. And whereas the money raised in the Basketball Challenge goes directly towards School Resource Officer Programs within the school as well as to aid in counseling services for students in need. Now therefore be it proclaimed that the City of Grand Valley Board of Aldermen and I, Mayor Mike Todd, acknowledge the dedicated service and commitment of Daniel, Officer Daniel Imes in making the Grand Valley Schools safer and more enjoyable for our community children. In witness whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city to be affixed this 11th day of August 2014 in the city of Grand Valley, Missouri. Okay, next time is citizens' participation. Uh, we ask the citizens to step forward to the podium and microphone and address the board, and please give your name and address for the record. Do you have anyone who wishes to address the board this evening? Mr. Totten, if you have to remind her, it doesn't count. This is important <laughs> because you guys, um, September the 5th, Red Friday, at 6 o'clock in the morning until 9 o'clock in the morning, there's going to be some little old lady you all know over at McDonald's trying to help them raise money by selling their flyer uh, banner things for the Chiefs. Now, come on, guys, put this on your uh, calendars. We got to get up, and if I got to be up there by 5:45, you guys at least can come get coffee and get us a a little uh, banner. I already know one gentleman that won't make it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wants to address the board this evening? All right, seeing so you know, move on to the consent agenda. I move that we accept the consent agenda. I have a motion from Alderman Scully to accept the consent agenda. Do I have a second? Second. Second Alderman West. Any discussion? 
Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Seeing no presentations, move on to discussion. Update on conditional use permit racetrack recreation area. Nobody's had a work session involving that. I don't know if there's anything. Any other report other than that? Um, I, I think, think just for the record, record it's good since this is your regular meeting for um, city attorney Gary, go ahead and give an update as to the documents that were received. Okay. Yeah, I just, just to inform the board, I think most of you know, um, but Impact Motorsports, uh, DBA Valley Speedway, and Denison County Shroud um, did file a lawsuit. Uh, this lawsuit was uh, filed um, last Friday, and I think most of us, um, it was served today. Um, so um, we'll be dealing with that lawsuit, and I um, just wanted to inform the board that uh, that lawsuit has been filed. All right. Do we have any questions? All right. Move on then, seeing no new business. Move on to pre previous business, business, which was the building permit fee waiver. Basically, the finding was that it's illegal for us to do that. Well, I mean, basically, that when you're doing any any sort of fees or waivers of anything, that it has to be uniform, and that there can't be special exceptions. So, if we were to differ, then anybody could come back and ask for their fee be waived. That's that's correct. Okay. Then we have another question. This will move on to ordinances. This is Bill B14-15. Um, the second read, um, which will become Ordinance 2336, an ordinance amending Chapter. Oh wait, I'm sorry. Yeah, this is Bill B14-13. Um, this will be the second read, which will be Ordinance 2336, an ordinance amending Chapter 215, Offenses, Article 13, General Principles of Liability, adding Section 215.680, Possession or Consumption of Alcoholic Beverages on Public Property Prohibited. Mayor, I move we accept Bill 1413 for its Second reading and make it ordinance 2336. I have a motion from Alvin Arnold to accept Bill B14 13 for its second reading, making ordinance 2336. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Alvin West. Any discussion? Mayor, yeah, this, uh, this, this doesn't include, like, if you rent a building or the community center. We, I, we had a few questions about that at the last reading on this. But, as long as you rent the community center, you can have open containers and stuff like that, correct? Yes. Yes, that's, that's correct. And also, there has been a slight change um, from uh, the ordinance uh, that was at your last meeting um, in, in um, subsection A. Um, it has been deleted. Um, the last sentence of subsection A was deleted, um, which states this section includes occupants and drivers of vehicles on the public streets. Um, so this um, this ordinance will only apply will not apply to motor vehicles um, or passengers um, on on the public streets, and that issue has been will be addressed in the next ordinance. And 
and that the chief and I had talked about that. So. And I appreciate Matt's work on that. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any additional questions on this one? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Alderman Arnold? Yes. Alderman Johnston? Yes. Alderman Schaefer? Yes. Alderman Headley? Yes. Alderman Scully? Yes. Alderman West? Yes. Six zero, Mayor. This is Bill B 14 15 an ordinance amending chapter 342 alcohol related traffic offenses adding section 342.100 consumption of alcoholic beverages and moving motor vehicle prohibited section 342.110 transportation and motor vehicle prohibited section 342.120 exception vehicle for hire section 342.130 exception living quarters of a recreational motor vehicle and section 342.140 penalty. Mayor, I move that we accept Bill 1415 for its first read and bring it back for a second read by title only. I have a motion from Alderman Arnold to approve Bill B14-15 for its first reading, bring it back by title only for its second reading. Do I have a second? Second. Alderman <laughs> On Any discussion? The only discussion I had on it is that I didn't see the need to do two reads in one night. I know it was part of the previous bill, but uh, would there be a problem if we do this as normal and do it in two, night, two separate nights? Okay. They're just trying to have just trying to keep all the uniforms on my delivery message to the officers calling one shot. I didn't see an urgency to, to move it faster, so I try to stay away from the process of doing double reads the same, on a bill in the same night. So do we need a motion to remove that then? Do we, do, we probably do that for a bill the first time, Neil? Or do it now? No, I'll go ahead and do because you've got a motion on the floor for your first read. Do that, and then if someone wants to remove it, they can remove it after read. Okay. Uh, any other discussion then about B14-15 for its first reading? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. 6 0, first mayor. Mayor, we move to the table the second reading to our next meeting. Sure. I have a motion from Alderman Arnold to remove Bill B14-15 from tonight's agenda, placing on the next agenda for its second reading. Is that right? All right, do I have a second? Second. Second Alderman Johnston. Any discussion on the motion to remove it tonight? Right. Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Uh, six zero, Mayor. This is Bill B14-16 uh, for the first read and ordinance amending Chapter 382, Vehicle Weight, Size, and Load Limits, Section 382.030, <laughs> Weight Regulations, Commercial Vehicles Over 5 Tons Prohibited. I move that we accept Bill number B14-16 for first reading and bring it back for second reading by title only. I have a motion from Alderman Scully to approve Bill B14-16 for its first reading. Reading back by Tylon for the second reading. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Alderman Hesley. Any discussion? Yeah, Mayor, could we, uh, at the beginning of the meeting, we had a few questions over this. Could we have Ryan go over why we're doing this to maybe help some answer some questions yeah. that we've been asked? Yeah, this is uh, an existing ordinance that we're amending. Uh, after we finish the interchange project, uh, commercial traffic, truck traffic that was get, trying to go to the industrial parks, uh, rather than, than taking the new Macquarie and taking the loop down to Jefferson, uh, began to cut through Woodbury Drive. With that, we've seen an increase in repairs uh, and road damage. We've had several significant failures along that road. So. Uh, with the uh, 
fact that we had the increased repairs, we were also getting complaints from citizens that there was more truck traffic uh, and some of the speeds as well of the truck traffic. People were driving back and forth pretty quick. At the end of June, we put uh, some traffic counters out there. It helped us identify how fast they were going, the classification of trucks that are going up and down there. And uh, from the test period, we found that on average, there was about 20 semi-trailers per day traveling up and down that road going back to the industrial park. So for that reason, um, it's our recommendation that we add this road uh, to the schedule of roads that truck traffic over five tons is not permitted. Were they speeding as well, right? Speeding? Were they speeding as well? Yeah, we, we had uh, 35 mile per hour was the 85th percentile speed. So uh, quite a few people were exceeding the speed limit over 10 miles per hour. talk to any of these truck drivers to ask why they're not using the other roads instead of the ferry? No, I, I think just with the, the jog in the road, it's probably more inconvenient. They see that as a straight shot uh, back to that industrial area. But we have, I mean, we really didn't have any, any mechanism to stop the, the trucks. They weren't violating any laws. So we you know, didn't send the police out to, to stop them. But just looking at the, the route up there, it is a quicker in and out, but that road's not designed for commercial traffic. I know we had an issue not long ago on our demise, and I know you actually talked to the uh, company on those 18 wheelers, and, and I think that was resolved satisfactorily, as I recall. I think you brought it up, didn't you? Yeah, it hadn't stopped them. It didn't stop it? So are they still traveling on our demise? Probably not as much now since we put that turn where you got to stop and turn. But uh, they still travel it. I believe one of the main concerns is how it's going to affect the local services that travel up and down through there. Okay. Which it doesn't affect them. No, I mean, it, it, the local delivery trucks are exempt from. Right. from the, the prohibition of traffic on there. So if it's somebody that's, you know, doing business on Woodbury, it's UPS, FedEx, that sort of stuff. Trash trucks. Yeah, trash so. trucks that, that will not impact them. How would they know that running Woodbury down to Jefferson isn't, isn't still the local delivery? <laughs> you know, the, the best we can do is if we have, you know, chronic offenders, I mean, if it becomes an issue, then we can... And when you say local delivery, they're still delivering right off that street versus going the other way off that street. I don't know if that really covers it. Uh -oh. But don't they use Maybe the I don't equipment? understand the question. Well, what, right now they can go Jefferson to, I mean, Jefferson and other streets are, it's not Jefferson they're turning to at in William those industrial issues, but they're going off Woodbury and turning into the same place. Mm -hmm. How do they know that that's not local delivery? Just because it's not on Woodbury. Well, the, the the point is is that Woodbury cannot be used as an access for anything else for commercial traffic. If you're I understand that, but when we're reading the ordinance, we're saying except for local delivery along Woodbury. Yeah. It's a little vague, though. but it's, it's pretty ambiguous when they're going up to Woodbury and they're turning onto the street that they're you know they're just accessing the street they're delivering on. I don't know that that covers it. But don't your signs just say no truck traffic over five tons? Except for local delivery. Yeah, except for local delivery. They don't say local on the sign. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It should. It, it says should. except okay. for local delivery, so they're delivering locally. Um, I think it's pretty ambiguous. I think you'd have a tough time. Matt, would you have a tough time enforcing that ticket? I'm trying to look at this ordinance right now to see what it says. I mean, I think it's going to depend upon, um, you know, if they're, if they're not serving, um, I guess, from Woodbury Drive, um, from Valley Ridge Drive to BB Highway, if they're not stopping in between those two highways, um, or, then it's not going to be a local delivery under this ordinance. So if they're outside of that area, um, then it will not be a local delivery. 
So and I would, I would have to look at a map to see exactly no, where, where it is. You have Woodbury goes down and yeah. it turns to the street, which I'm, I'm not familiar with the name of that Valley street. Ridge. Valley Ridge. Valley, Valley Ridge. Ridge. Yeah. It turns to Valley Ridge, and Valley Ridge is, is all the businesses are accessing. All industrial. Should we just say resident? I mean, can you put residential? Well, I have a way of solving in, it in the residential deliveries only. The opening section of the ordinance it says. Well, I think he's more worried about the sign, right? Well, I'm I'm worried about how people understanding it. I mean, if, if I'm if I'm in a truck and I go down this road and this road is is the direct link to the street I'm delivering on, to me that's local delivery. I mean, the way the ordinance reads is they're gonna, you're going to have to be in between those two streets for it to be local delivery because that's where the truck traffic's being prohibited is in between those two streets. And so if they're just off of those two, uh, off of those two streets, then it wouldn't be considered local delivery under this ordinance. Uh, it, the sign is not that specific, though. It doesn't say delivery on Woodbury. It says local delivery, and that's pretty local. When you're I'm going to the end of the street and make a left two buildings and dropping my load, that's pretty local. That's pretty close to local, and they're going to say, "I drive this road here, and the outer road run parallel." I mean, is is the issue with the sign or the ordinance? I guess that's the I'm, yeah. I've driven trucks. Yeah. If I'm going down a road that I know this road takes me to the street I'm delivering on. That's local delivery to me. But knowing what the dilemma is, you have a suggestion. No, and that's the problem I've got, because if, if the truck was going to drive up, put their out of road, they thought that was easier, and then go to coal, that might that would fall under what I think they're doing here. When they drive up Woodbury and make a left turn and move businesses to somewhere on Valley Ridge, that's a local delivery. It's inside our community, and it's only basically one blocker. Yeah. If the sign said, um, it's delivery is only on Woodbury, whereas local delivery, that would be a little bit different. But putting that sign up says local delivery, that's pretty local to me. It, well, I mean, you could have it say, res I mean, on that particular area, if it's only residential um, that we're concerned with, I mean, it could be residential for from on Woodbury. Just put vehicles over five percent prohibited except for residential, residential deliveries. deliveries. Residential deliveries. But my problem is the sign that says local deliveries. So we need to change it. We, we can change the sign to say vehicles yeah, over five percent prohibited except for residential deliveries, right? Yes. That's right. Those have all those those have been in there. Previously, and then there's signage on each of these streets. I would imagine so. I, I haven't. I didn't confirm <laughs> that. No. It's not a new. The only thing that's being changed on this ordinance is the addition of Woodbury. All the rest were pre-existing in that ordinance. I don't think there's any sign on Cannon Street. I've not. I've not noticed any signs on those other streets. We can go back and confirm that because it should have a sign. Yes. Every street that's listed Maybe on here should have. Local sign. delivery. Is that what the sign is supposed to say? Well, it's changing this evening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we better check. Well, yeah. so that means we're gonna have to replace the sign. Yes. Well, well, but we, we have, have we have one up. We're gonna have to replace all of them. Well, I think the local delivery fit in those because that's all, all in the residential area. Yeah. But this here is a residential. I mean, it's a residential street that leads to a a like commercial street. Right. Can we can we do that, Matt? Change one sign, but not the rest of them. I mean, you're not staying in. Yeah. yeah, I mean the, the signs are there to just provide people notice of what of what the laws are, and if we're and you know that the sign that we're talking about on Woodbury is just to to clarify that it's only residential on Woodbury, um, but the other signs, the, all these signs don't have to be uniform. We're just trying to inform um, the people um, where they can drive these trucks. See where I'm going with that because I don't want to get into this where they get a ticket for it and then, well this sign says this on this one, mm -hmm. this one doesn't say it here, so how can we? So. Right. I mean, the ordinance is, is. I mean, the ordinance says what it says, and they get a ticket for violating the ordinance. The signs are just trying to inform people of the ordinance, and we're being more specific on Woodbury, just to in, to to inform them that you know this is only residential here. Only residential is local here, right. because 
Yeah, the, com the commercial areas on Woodbury are beyond the boundaries of what's local limits as defined by the ordinance. I mean, I get what you're saying. I just want to make sure we're clarified that we're not mm -hmm. going to run into a problem down the road with one sign saying one, one thing different. That's no, I mean, they're, di they're different areas anyway. The, yeah. Where the signs are going to be are different areas. Thank you. Anyone have anything else? See you none. Know, all in favor, please say aye. Uh, All opposed, same sign. First mayor. This is Bill B-1417, uh, the first read, an ordinance authorizing the city administrator to use funds in the tax increment financing TIF reserve fund to pay the debt service on the 2012 tax increment financing TIF bonds and amending the 2014 reserve fund expense budget city fund 301. I move that we accept. Item B14-17 for its first reading and bring it back for its second reading by title only. Okay, I have a motion from Auburn West to approve Bill B14-17 for its first reading, bring it back by title only for its second reading. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Auburn Scully. Any discussion? Yes, I, I believe this isn't a surprise to the Board of Aldermen that the reserve fund would be needed to in order to pay the initial. Uh, this one. Um, I think the bigger question in this year is what are we doing as we go forward? And to answer that question, um, I have asked Paul Arino to be present to provide an update to the board as to the activity in that area in hopes that the development of that area would uh, um, come sooner than later and um, in an attempt to uh, bring business so that uh, it will hold that this project will hold its own. Uh, any we expected what the first two years is that what we've been putting money back. What was our time frame we were expecting to have to? Well, you know, we we knew the first couple of years would be difficult for us at best. I think the concern now is because due to the lack of developments per there, how much longer will that be? Uh, can that fund hold its own? Um, we're, we're continuing to set the money back in reserves, but the hope is that um, if the, through development, additional funds would come in from sales tax and, and uh, be able to help pay for that. Uh, something that you may recall that we've done in an attempt to set additional dollars back is that all four corners are in the project area for uh, this uh, this contract, and so even the areas like Advance and McDonald's that are bringing the new dollars coming in, we are putting those into the reserve fund to be able to help support that. Casey, who's now on, online, to be able to do that as a movie theater. So um, it, it, it's steady now, and it will be steady for the next year or two, but um, after that, we're, we're concerned about the, where the additional dollars will come from without some additional development on all four corners. So who... Paulie Start with Paul, all right. Give us an update up there. Sure, Mayor, Council members, thank you. Um, what I will let you know is I'm doing everything in my possible means to bring businesses in and, and attract them and show them the area. Um, I do have two realtors on commission, I actually have a contract for extra commission um, where they both can have commission no matter which one brings it in. So we're marketing it to the area. Uh, we've had several, um, really we focused last time I think I met and gave a TIF update, we were really trying to focus on getting some restaurants and fast food um, establishments in the area. And we've had um, actually quite a few that have flown in and done some market studies. And one of the biggest hurdles that I'm getting from them or hearing as far as feedback is just the lack of um, uh, lunch traffic they would have in the business. And when, basically, you know, as Dairy Queen told me, you know, we go down the road one exit and we triple our lunch crowd. And those are the kind of responses that I've gotten. Now, really what my focus has been on in uh, been letting, so, you know, we're really trying to focus on finding a second large anchor um, to go into the development. And by having a second anchor in there, we can really attract and try to get some of that lunch, lunch traffic, crowd traffic into the area. 
Um, we have been, um, actually I think since I've talked to TIF order soon after there, we have been talking with a, a larger anchor that is going, um, is willing to look at the area and they've continued back and forth conversations. We just haven't got to a contractual terms yet. Um, the, the problem is with these larger boxes, you know, before they flop a $21 million building down, um, they're just slow. They're taking their time. Um, we've had one that's done a market study um, that's looking at the site. I'm working with another developer out of North Kansas City area that's helping me work with them who's built some of these before. Um, do I have a guarantee we're going to get there? I don't. Um, but we are definitely putting in front of any possible person that could fit into the Grain Valley market. And we're hoping that we'll, by attracting another large anchor there, then we'll have that foot traffic to fill in those rest of those retail outlots and hopefully work on filling in um, the other four corners as we get another anchor. Um, I will say originally, um, you know, McDonald's uh, here, originally we had them ready to sign, had the contract drawn up, and um, they went on the other side of the uh, development, and that was more of a decision about what side of the road was going to be done first because they were ready to build. Um, even as fact as O'Reilly and AutoZone that are now in the city, um, we have sent them information and actually sent them the new road development plans and our realtors. So we've, we've talked with, and the city has done a lot of this work as well too. They've been out there contacting and, and contacting these businesses, and we have too. And a lot of that information, my realtors have worked and got these people into the city of Logan Town, and, and luckily some of them have located in the town. Um, so all I can do is promise you we're doing our best and working. The properties listed um, with two realtors were um, cold calling places. Um, we're working and trying to make any favorable terms and conditions to try to get that development done because trust me, it's in my best interest as well to get that done because uh, you know the land's sitting there and it, it costs money every single day it sits there so out of my pocket. So we're definitely working trying to get that done as quick as we can. Be glad to entertain any questions. When, when you first um, talked to us, you talked about the possibility. I'm sorry, just a cat louder for me. <laughs> yeah, when you first talked to us, you talked about the possibility of a uh, um, grocery store. Is there, are you still seeking that avenue? or? Still working, trying to attract the grocery store. Let me ask you this. Uh, oh, I don't know how long ago. Lex and I had a conversation a couple of weeks ago, and we were. I've never really noticed it, probably because I've been here my whole life and the building's been there my whole life, but the octagonal building there, you know, she's kind of pointing out, you know, that's kind of an eyesore, and I didn't think of it much when you told me, but probably, I don't know, a couple of days ago, my wife and I were coming back from Oak Grove area, and my wife looks over and says, you guys need to get rid of that building over there, that's an eyesore, you need to add some curb appeal to that, <laughs> to that development over there. I mean, I know it doesn't sound like much, but... Sure. some way that maybe we can clean that up a little bit, maybe it would help the curb appeal out? Yeah, I actually uh, met with my bank last week and started that conversation, so they're, they're stirring on that because obviously there's you know a pretty significant cost in the demolition and, and removing that building, so I can report back to Alexa here and have a report to here in the next okay. week or two. But, I mean, that may help a little, you know, have all those shows on your house, curb appeal, maybe we need to add a little curb appeal to the development, I don't know. Sure. How often are you giving status updates to Ms. Barton? Um, it, it differs. Uh, occasionally we talk once a week, sometimes, you know, every, every three weeks. Um, just kind of depends on how busy things are for both of us, you know. Um, we have each other's cell phone numbers. Um, definitely if I, anything comes up on my end, I um, give her a call freely and she's, she knows she can give me a call freely at any time. Um, so um, I'm usually in town once a week, um, so I'm down here trying to meet with any potential people and uh, do some things at the movie theater and things along that line, so um, open and available. Um, the last few weeks have been rather busy in my life, just um, kid going off to college, one getting married, and <laughs> so I, the last three weeks I have been a little bit tied up on things, so I probably owe her an update. But. Are, you, are, are you comfortable with the... And my information you're getting and you know, um Paul is, is responsive to the request uh, <coughs> that's just a part of an economic development of great trying to get somebody to come and take a look at your property. Um, not uh, not knowing exactly everything that's going on in that arena other than what you know that I know, I don't know if there's anything new here recently. So probably some additional updates would be wanted. Thank you.
and I'll, I'll be glad to get with Alexa. And like I said, I'm down once a week, so I can we can start scheduling regular meetings and versus phone call conversations. So I know you just got through budget time, and that was tough. <laughs> so. Is there anything that we can do? Yeah. Call a particular entity that you're talking to and, and tell them as an elected official we'd really be interested in coming to Green Valley. Um, I appreciate that offer, and I, I will say uh, Alexa has been very responsive anytime we've had um, anybody that would have an interest in speaking with the city. And um, I definitely, if that would be helpful, if I hear that from uh, a certain client that's coming in town, I'll definitely get a hold of Alexa, and she could probably make the appropriate contacts with you. Gen gen generally, it's uh, getting them in town is one thing, but it really comes down, and nowadays it really comes down to the market studies and the, the foot traffic they can generate. And we're, we're still kind of coming out with this recession or kind of hanging or lingering around. And, you know, the, I'm seeing activity pick up. I mean, in the Springfield area, we finally have seen some fast food and some restaurants that start to pick up. In fact, when my other developers, we just put two lots under contract or getting ready to. We've got some LOIs on them. And they sat there for three years with that one. So we're starting to see some activity pick up on my end. And I'm starting to see other things kind of go. It's just there's... There's a lot of options, and they're, everybody's very cautious as they're going forward. Um, I mean, I think you even heard like Darden Restaurants recently, they sold off the Red Lobster chain, and they used to have 100 something realtors, and my understanding is they only have about three or four now that work internally in their department because they're just so selective on their sites, and we're just, there's just a lot of opportunities for them to choose where to go. So what we got to do is, is show them everything Green Valley has to offer from, you know, a wonderful community to 13,000 residents that, you know, need the services. Um, for a town of size, there's a lot of services out here, and that's why we started this project and worked on this project. And um, this town has a lot to offer, proximity close to Kansas City, but still has that small town. Um, everything feel about it. And um, the more I think we get them out of here, I think the more they start looking, um, the better opportunity we have. And the fact is, you know, we're still a filler community, so new businesses coming in, they're going to locate in other locations. And because I've heard this term a lot, then we start looking for the little outskirts areas that we want to fill in. And so we, we kind of fight some of those demographic issues, I, I think, is a lot of it as we go forward. But I don't want to be a pessimist. You know, I'm very optimistic that, um, you know, we're, we're going to get something moving forward, um, hopefully sooner than later. Um, we've got great, great offers um, out there to some potential people, and we're, you know, willing to do what we need to do to um, get these buildings in there. So. When you say great offers, um, example, I mean, the big chain restaurants, have we had any, anybody from... Uh, just thinking off like an Applebee. I know Applebee sits up the road, but like 54th Street Applebee's, you know, um, Red Lobster. Has any of the big chains even showed any interest at all? Um, we sent information to just about every large chain, even to regional chains, or which I guess Pizza Ranch and you know various things like that. And really, really, what's really hurting is that lunch crowd traffic. Um, you know, we'll, we'll kind of get some back and forth. You know, you know, we'll kind of put it in our file. We'll, you know, next time we're in Kansas City, we'll look. Um, we've had some that come out and actually done some studies, and you know their studies kind of lead them more, you know, in toward the Blue Springs Independence area. You got and Texas Roadhouse up there; it doesn't open till four o'clock, and you got to wait in line to get in there after four o'clock. Correct. So right. I, I'm having yeah, a hard time swallowing the demographics. Well, and really, I guess as you look at, you know, Texas Roadhouse is an exception is they're mainly dinner business and, you know, even Olive Garden depends on lunch crowd. And I'm just reporting to you what I hear. You know, I'm not up here making stuff up. This is just what I'm getting the feedback from. Well, I understand. I and mean, uh, we got people we have to answer to, so I, I need to ask these questions. No, I, so I, I, I get yeah, you. I just want to say where I'm, I'm coming from. Um, but to... Um, I guess, I guess specifically is a lot of those restaurants, as you mentioned, Texas Roadhouse, you know, they, they really only locate in front of large box boxes because they depend on the other traffic from the synergy from those large boxes. And um, we're just not going to get a Red Lobster sitting in front of the movie theater or, or a Long John's, I mean, it's, or, or not a Long John's, a uh, Lone Star or those type of restaurants because their demographic won't allow them to locate there. You know, they've done their studies, they have restaurants that have, feed, they have failed. Um, you know, until there is, you know, some other large activity there, that type of restaurant would be hard to get. I mean, just being straight honest, that would be very difficult. Are you getting any assistance from our uh, 
Um, both of my realtors um, have been in contact with him to get some information as far as demographics, and um, he's actually called a couple leads into my realtors, and they have followed up on that. So, you know, occasionally, I can, you know, I can't say he's knocking down my door, we're knocking down his door, but, you know, occasionally we do get the information from him, and he's been helpful, you know, every time we've called on him to do that, so. Any questions for Ms. Barrino? Thank you. Thank you. If you guys got any questions, ever feel, feel free to let us have my number. Feel free to call me um, okay. just, you know, anytime. It'll be fine. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I did also ask Jill over our uh, TIF attorney, uh, an economic development attorney, to uh, take a look at some contracts and see if there was, do you have any comments for the board this evening? Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the board. Good to see you again. Um, I did, uh, as, as Alexa mentioned, I, I did uh, take a look at the, uh, the agreement. Uh, you know, some of the questions were, you know, what are the, the uh, time frames we're, we're looking at to, uh, to move the development forward. Um, and so I, I did provide for you in your packet kind of an update as to, you know, what, what discussions were had basically as this, this project were coming through as far as what was to be built and what the goals were for, uh, for getting uh, these things done and, and in what kind of time frame. Uh, you may recall that, um, that when the, uh, the development itself was approved, uh, we had kind of the, the big question mark of, of the timing of the MoDOT improvements. Uh, when would that all occur? And so one of the items uh, that was put in the uh, TIF contract that was identified you know, through this review is the fact that um, we need to go back and actually put a redevelopment schedule, a hard schedule now, into that TIF contract. Uh, that doesn't exist at this point uh, because it, it, at that time it was it was very uncertain as to the uh, the MoDOT improvements. So now that the MoDOT improvements are done, uh, one of the things that I've talked with uh, Alexa about is the fact that we do need to uh, reach out to Mr. Larino and begin the process of nailing down a hard development schedule so that you can have some hard dates that you can be looking at as, as things progress uh, with this. And so I spoke with Mr. Lorino prior to the meeting. We're going we're gonna to step outside uh, once we're done here this evening and start that process of getting that lined up and would like to have an amendment uh, that would have this. Uh, it's called a superseding addendum. It's, a, it's an addition to the TIF contract that will lay out this, uh, this schedule. So uh, we'll be bringing that forward to you. But I'm also happy to answer any other questions that you may have uh, about um, the TIF or anything like that. Any questions? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Anyone have, have any discussion or questions? Well, if nothing happens again next year, we'll be going through the same process, right? We'll have to take money out of the reserve to pay the next payment again. Yes, to answer your question, at this point in time, the uh, the development is underperforming uh, in in terms of being able to pay the debt service. And one thing that we have to keep in mind is that debt service is going to escalate as time goes on. Uh, so it's designed, you know, to allow some ramp up for the for the project. So at this point, you know, um, every day we're going to start getting a little further and further behind the ball uh, on on this. And so it is imperative that that Mr. Lorino gets moving and gets some development done. You know, we've kind of kept up on our end of the bargain. Uh, our end of the bargain was that if the debt service falls short, we put an annual appropriation pledge, exactly what you're doing this evening, is you're saying to the extent that that debt service is, is lagging, we're going to cover that cost out of, out of uh, the city's general fund. And we haven't had to do that to this point because, as, as Ms. Barton was uh, pointing out, that so far we've had some revenues that have come in from other places and we've actually been able to keep a, a reserve fund, kind of a rainy day fund, just in case. And so um, that fund has been filling up, and that's where you're utilizing the, the monies that you're going to be covering the debt service from at, at this point. So you're not actually touching the, uh, the, uh, the, your actual uh, general fund. But it's, it's one of those things that kind of reminds us, hey, this thing is lagging at this point. We don't see the development that we were promised at the time. It's time to get that moving because there's only so many, it's a finite amount of funds in that. And, you know, it'll... It'll fill up during the year, and then we'll empty it out when we have to do something like this. But it, you know that process is going to, you know, it's going to start being more and more uh, each year. So I guess the next question is, how long do we hang on to the way we're running it now? Do we? And what I'm trying to say is, do we stay with Mr. Lorino 
How long do we do that? How long do we do we risk taxpayers' money? Well, um, we're in it for the long haul with what we promise. The, you know, the question is, um, you know, in part is answered by you know what we end up putting in that redevelopment schedule to nail down a date for this to be done. But you know, quite frankly, unless you know of a developer that's going to come along and, and do it faster than he is, you know, at this point, hey, this is this is the date that we brought to the dance. Um, so, you know, this is where we are right now. So the course that we're on is your recommendation. It, it is what we've agreed to do at this point. Thank you. Anything else have anything? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Right. If there's nothing else, then. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Thank you, First Mayor. <laughs> that's, all, that's all of the ordinances, Mayor. <coughs> Resolution R14-37. Authorizing the City of Grand Valley to utilize Jackson County Missouri's 2014 payment maintenance contract for the City of Grand Valley's 2014 Street Maintenance Program. So I move that we accept Resolution R14-37. I have a motion to Alderman Scully to, <coughs> Scully to approve Resolution R14-37. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Alderman Headley. Any discussion? No. Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Thank you, Mayor. This is resolution R14-38, the resolution authorizing the city administrator to enter into a one-year extension agreement with Trout Beeman and Company for Audit Services. I move that we accept resolution R14-38. I have a motion from Alderman West to approve resolution R14-38. Do I have a second? Second. Second, Alderman Arnold. Any discussion? Where there's prices comparable to the past. Uh, they were like, about $1,000 more than last year. And our uh, provision in the bid is extended for one year increments for up to five years. It's just a little more efficient to go ahead and extend it to start over and train a new auditor for if they were to uh, swap the bid. Okay. Do we have anything else? See that? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Next okay. item is city attorney's reports. Next item is city administrator and staff reports. Uh, Mayor Board, I just want to give a final uh, update on our national night out last week. It was an unbelievable success as always. I, you know, give it to uh, staff um, for putting together an excellent program. Our, all of our volunteers from our VIPs, our explorers, and everybody else that volunteered their time, such as Alderman Johnston. I'm not sure how to get a count on how many hot dogs you actually uh, cooked this year. Do you know? About 600. And on our sign-in sheets, we had close to just under, under 500, and I know we had a lot of people that bypassed those as well. So I think we had anywhere in the neighborhood about 500, a little over um, at one point during that. You know, we had the uh, Jackson County Sheriff's Department. We had CJC Fire. Um, our canine demonstration uh, brought out Lee Summit as well as County, uh, Jackson County. And Cash County was there, and then we had the Lee Summit um, Bomb Squad, I think that was kind of a big hit, blowing up a couple of watermelons. I think everybody enjoyed that. It was pretty cool. Um, I'm sure I'm leaving out several things. We had a lot of other vendors there, and I just want to say thank you to everybody that um, volunteered their time and, and did an excellent job. I know we had raffles that started from the minute we started the event at um, 6 o'clock or whatever and, and went till 8.30, and they were still going to about a quarter till 9, just trying to raffle things off. So we had excellent donations and and everything so it's just everything went off without a hitch and you know again think local vendors patricia's uh donated quite a bit of things for us i mean we, a lot of people did so i'm sure i'm leaving a lot out i could go on and on and on but i think everybody had an excellent time 
Next up is Board of Alderman Reports and Comments. Alderman Arnold. I just want to compliment uh, Mr. Shannon for your work on the Youth League. I've had a couple of people tell me they've talked with you and it's very informative. You've been very forthcoming with information for them, so keep it up. Good work. Okay. Alderman West. Nothing. Alderman Headley. Just uh, one thing. I traded emails with Ryan and Chief today concerning, I think her name is Ms. Olbert. Over turf upon Long Drive. Is there is there a schedule, Chief, that you send the cars up or send the uh, traffic officer up or? Yeah, it's it just not really just because it was a random, but that word is pushed out to her to start doing some folks in that area as well. Uh, I assume that also, but specifically for the neighborhood. Yeah, and I. I'd like to have other, you know, maybe some other discussions, Ryan, concerning, you know, the HOAs offered to buy more speed bumps or speed humps or whatever you call them. Um, I, and I understand all the things Rick laid it out really well, but I think maybe it's something we should look at if they're willing to help pony up some of the money. Yeah, we'll look into it. Gary and Cook about how we did structure that. Alderman Scully. I've been involved in this conversation too, so we're working on it. Thank you. Alderman um, Schaefer. Uh, a while back, I asked Alexa to uh, bring bring the uh, savings to the board on uh, four-year terms. Uh, I'd just like to get the feedback from the board if uh, the board would like to see that brought brought to us from the staff direct staff and to put it together and bring it to us and start making it happen instead of two-year terms go to four-year terms as elected officials with a savings of eight to ten thousand dollars of the election. Uh, how would that work if we passed that so the ones that are up next year would run for a four-year term? Yeah, it has to go to a vote. So what you would be instructing staff to do is to draft language to bring to you an ordinance to put it on the ballot available. Election to consider going from a two year to four year term. And that email that I sent to all of you, I, I just used a local city, which was Sugar Creek, that utilized that language. Um, it passed pretty well in Sugar Creek to go from two year to four year. It's, it's just pretty basic information. Other than uh, for some of the terms you can explain, and I tried to put that into that uh, email about how you would explain, depending upon when it goes. 
um, before the people uh, how it would elect, how it would affect future elections. So depending on, I think we're late the November election. Well, the deadline in August. Yeah, the deadline being in August. Yeah. Yeah. So you'd have to, yeah. I'd say you're looking at April, probably. You're probably more looking at uh, next spring. Yeah, yeah. I'd be curious to see what surrounding cities are doing. How many of them are two years, four years? The other thing that you want to do is you want to consider when you put it on the ballot. Because you're going to want to make sure there's other things on the ballot. So, Because if we're the only one that has something on there, it's very expensive. So you want to take a look at what other things will be on the ballot so you're sharing that cost of an election with another entity. So February typically sometimes isn't a good time. April, we already had something on the ballot, so you might want to put it on the ballot at that time. So that gives you time to take a look at that information that Alderman Johnson has asked for. I would think if we're looking at doing something like that, we need to look at the possibility of uh, also having term limits. Can we do that, Matt? Yes. Turn on? Yes. And the other downside that I can see to it is a longer term commitment might limit people that would be interested in running. So it's a lot easier to sign up for a two year commitment than it is for a four year commitment. And I, I know with fire districts where they have six year commitments, sometimes it's very difficult to find people to, to fill in those positions. So it's also a something you want to consider there. You don't, you don't want to have elections that nobody signs up because they don't want to do a four-year term and then the mayor has to appoint somebody or have you know, midterm or whatever until the next election. So it's, it's something you definitely need to consider before we move into this. I know it's a savings, but... It what, what did the last election cost us? The one we just had? It cost us about 98 dollars so and we didn't have anything here. on the agenda. We had just a general municipal election. The last time we had a special election for a special item on the agenda, it cost us around 600. And that was 2010. That cost goes down whenever there's multiple entities with items on the election. So it doesn't always cost us the 9800 9, Typically, 90, around 9000 is about your minimum. That's probably about the standard for April because yeah. it's usually us in the school district. Yeah. So every every other year, savings to the to uh, the homeowners or the voters would be nine to ten thousand dollars on the average for not that running an election every year. year. Yeah. yeah. So about half a half a cent. If we have each year. Unless there's something else. Yeah. Unless, unless there's another city issue on the ballot, a tax issue or something like that. Right. Do we have any control over how many polling places they have? I mean, some of these polling places you sit there all day and there's, you know, at two or three people an hour and they have, you know, um, you know, the church down there gets very few. Um, I mean, if they consolidate them, it'd reduce costs. Why would we want to do that? Pardon? Why would we want to reduce costs? Well, I mean, that, that would help reduce and save, be a yeah. savings even in the election. We do have. Yeah. <laughs> we, we don't have any control over that. No, that so, what direction do we need to go now? With, do we take a, a vote to see how it works? Well, I mean, you can bring it through yourself and put up for, for, I mean, go to the board. Does it mean it'll pass, you'll get a second, but you can always. Direct staff. I mean, you can direct staff to put it on. They just need somebody to introduce it. Does it mean you look at second minute or pass, though? Depends on how you want to do it. Well, I, mean, I, don't, want, I don't want to waste staff time. I mean, is this something the board's interested well, in doing? It sounds like the board's kind of wants more information, I think. Actually, yes, I think we do need more information before we put this on anything. So what I'm hearing is other communities... Yeah, uh, we want to see what other cities are doing. With and that, term on the thoughts of other right. cities. Is there any other questions that you have? Maybe, we can research for you. Maybe just do a hypothetical, what, what the average savings would have been looking back five years or ten years. Well, we can give you some historical data as to what our elections cost. 
Because uh, this last election, we had two people run opposed, and now uh, we spent a chunk of money for it. And to, to Alderman Johnson's point, I mean, is there any way to talk to the Board of Elections and say, you know, do it all at the community center? Um, we could. It, it, you might ask your mayor to draft a letter to them, and um, coming from another criminal elected official, to, that the board would like it reviewed. Yeah, if they weren't okay with that, I'd do that. Uh, yeah, we'll do that. I'll probably get shredded when they get it, but we'll do it. <laughs> Is there any suggestions you would have, Alexa? At least get board three yeah. well, two votes at the same you. place. Same place, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and what would probably be helpful is I'll bring additional information as to you know what some of that sample information uh, ballot language could look like, along with what would be a recommended time frame to put it on, when you would need to approve that ordinance, to put that language on. With the rec with the current recommendation that you would please do it for April's ballot because you already got something on, on that ballot. And that way, um, it doesn't cost, there's not an additional cost to do that. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Where, where would the supposed savings be earmarked for? Well, it's, it's a uh, cost for it. it, comes from the general fund. So you would have additional funding in your general fund. For other items. I, I, I just think that there are questions that need to be answered. Okay. All right, we'll compile that and I'll get the list off. Okay. Anything else, Alderman Schaefer? Not uh, this time, Mayor. Alderman Johnson? Yeah, I wanted to congratulate the uh, um, Park Board, Shannon and Mr. Myers, on, uh, on the work they did. I thought they did a great job putting that uh, tournament together with short number teams. And, and I think everybody out there, all the other teams and stuff, I thought you had a good time. Next item is the mayor's report. Uh, I just want to thank everyone who helped with the state and city, and I'll even thank the chamber, but he's probably not going to pay attention to back there for <laughs> putting that on for us and getting that together. Uh, and then I don't have anything else. Do we have a need for an executive session? No, but no, something would else? you like to talk about what's going on happening next? Oh. Everyone in front of you should have, I'm going to call that goldenrod, I don't know what we're going to call that. This is an invitation for Mr. Lefko's uh, reception we're holding here at the community center, right? Remember the community center? Yeah, there's been a change of location. There'll be a, a reminder uh, tomorrow, but it's next Tuesday, week ahead of time, that that location could change. From this location to the community center. And also, just, you know, he's not here, so we can say this. I don't know if he watches the news or not, but we will, we are going to surprise him with, I believe, what will be the first ever key to the city given out that evening, so. Pass out of bag now. I know. I think it's the first ever. I mean, I don't know if we want <laughs> So we're going to honor him with that as well that evening, so. That's all I have. I do have one more item related to that. Okay. That is, um, uh, to Truman Heartland uh, Foundation's uh, Toast to the Town. Uh, the event that night is um, Saturday, September 6th. Um, the city is getting a table for the aldermen and for staff. However, if your spouse is attending, that's an additional $180. Um, so I need to find out from you in advance if, um, if your spouse or significant other is attending with you. Um, and, uh, so that I, we can do table count accordingly. Didn't we already respond to that? Okay. There was some um, question whether what the exact cost of the ticket was, um, how much the cost of the table was. Uh, right. The uh, cost for the tables went up this year, and the cost for the ticket went up this year. So. Once we found that out, that's why I'm coming back to you today. That the cost for the ticket is $180 for a guest so, versus the 160 I believe, that it was last year. So I just wanted everybody to know and get confirmation from everybody. Just be on the safe side.
No need for an executive session? Nope. All right. Unless someone has anything else, we'll adjourn. All right, we'll adjourn.